Hi, welcome to Chapter 6 Handout. Today we're going to be talking about foreign currency and return. So the first part of the handout, we're going to just calculate the return percentage. Uh, so in order to do that, I'm going to take my formula here and I'm going to add my ending value plus my dividends and I'm going to divide that by my beginning value. Okay, so that that is not the full formula, I'm also going to have to subtract one to get it into a percentage format. So first I'm going to put the total formula I created in brackets and then minus one. Okay, so the return here is 68%. So the minus one is really just to put it into a return percentage. And you can see here that if your beginning value was $10 and you wound up with about $16.75, a 68 68% increase makes sense. So that's how you calculate the basic return. Okay, and I'm just gonna copy that down. And we can see that in some cases you lose money, some cases you make money, but it's all about uh, where you end up and the dividends you're paid compared to where you started. So this is a, a very familiar concept. We've gone over this before, but let's look at it if we add foreign currency into the mix. Okay, so here we have a, a number of uh, companies and stock purchases and we're buying we're you know for example if we do buy IBM and we have a beginning rate and ending rate of the currency that are equal there's going to be no currency effect so when I create the formula here I, I basically took the ending value plus the dividends divided by the beginning value that if that sounds familiar because because the formula up here so there I'm calculating my basic return on just the stock information. But then I'm going to multiply it by the exchange rate at the end divided by the exchange rate at the beginning and then minus the whole thing by one. And you can see here in the formula that when you're working with Excel and you have a lot of these iterations, it's important to have these um, brackets around things that you want to calculate to apply to an earlier calculation because if you don't have the brackets Excel will just apply the PIMDAS order of operations. So this is one of the tricky things about working with Excel is getting these brackets right uh, in the formula. So you can see here that we have a 10% return. However, if we, if we have the same statistics of the beginning value, ending value, and dividend for IBM, and the beginning exchange rate is 0.25 and the ending exchange rate is 0.35, you see that the exchange um, exchange rate increased. So we're going to get a 54% return just on this increase of the exchange rate. So you see here, if I leave the exchange rate at 0.25, it's still a 10% return. If I make it to 0.30, it's a 32% return. So even a small, well, this is not a small change, but a 20% you know, change in the exchange rate can mean a big overall effect on your investment. But that's um, but if the exchange rate goes down, say 0.20, then you're going to lose money. So this basically, you know, if the dollar, say you're starting at the beginning exchange rate were a dollar um, of one, and we go 1.10, you'll we'll see that a 10% increase in the currency um, valuation basically the valuation of the dollar against the foreign currency, we're going to see a nice pickup in our returns. And if we apply this all the way down, we'll see that in, in some cases it's favorable, in some cases it's negative. So in, in, in many cases you can make money on your investment like, uh, and then lose money on the foreign, foreign currency side. Or the foreign currency side could generate profits. So for example, here in this example, we actually uh, lost money, beginning value to the ending value in dividend, we lost money. And if the, if the currency in, increases enough, it could change it to an overall positive return for our investment. So this is important to realize that a lot of your investments are gonna be affected by foreign currency. So if your company has any business in, generate any sales or profits in a foreign country, they're going to affect. They're going to feel the effect of the foreign currency, but you're not going to see it um, directly in your stock, like you would if you had.
purchase a stock that's actually in a foreign currency because when you purchase it, you have to convert your dollars into the foreign currency, purchase the stock, and then when you sell it, you have to sell the stock in that foreign currency, say it's in euros, and then convert those euros back to dollars. And that's how this part of the transaction will affect your overall return. Okay. Now, and again, when you build the formula, just be careful to make sure that you count the brackets. So if you have, on this side, you see I have three brackets going this way, one, two, three, and then on, you know, sort of um, this curvature, the, uh, what I'd call a left curve, I have one, two, three, four left curves, which means I must have one, two, three, four right curves. So just make sure that you're balancing your brackets uh, your, uh, when you are calculating these, and you should have no problem if you're using Excel. And if you're doing it by hand, just make sure you're using the order of operations. Okay, so that's it for this handout. Uh, I see, I'll see you for the next handout.